Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today we're diving right into Facebook's Libra coin. We'll break down how the currency is going to work, explain the goals of the Libra Association, and explore the role of Calibra in its fascinating project. Later, we'll also analyze the regulatory backlash and give you our own take on the currency. We publish three videos every month, two in-depth explorations into the fascinating world of blockchains, and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you want to stay up to date with our content, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to always get notified when we drop a new video. Also, please be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description below for details. Now, let's talk about Libra. It finally happened. After months of speculations and Facebook's secretive moves in the space, there's finally an official announcement on the Libra cryptocurrency. Let's start by breaking down the terminology. Libra is the name of a coin minted by the Libra network, which is the name of the underlying blockchain. The currency is backed by a diverse basket of assets called Libra Reserve. The assets are provided by the node validators, who together create the non-for-profit Libra Association. Calibra, on the other hand, is a for-profit regulated subsidiary of Facebook with the goal of developing products and services for the token. The first such product is Calibra Wallet, which will integrate the coin into the current ecosystems of Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram. According to the white paper, the primary design goal of Libra was to give access to financial services to people who are deprived of access to banking. Facebook estimates that a total number of 1.7 billion adults don't have access to any financial services. For that reason, the cost of loans can be prohibitively high for them, making it difficult to seek opportunities. Even though Facebook is a for-profit commercial enterprise, the separation between the Libra Association and Calibra means that lawfully statements like this one we just quoted are technically accurate. Of course, we can't ignore the existing user base of over 1.5 billion people who use Facebook and WhatsApp daily. Those people will surely be incentivized to use the currency, generating income for the Calibra subsidiary in the process. Now let's focus on the blockchain design. The consensus protocol used by the Libra network is proof of stake, but the validator nodes having significantly high financial and technical requirements. The algorithm known under the name of Libra BFT is a Byzantine fault tolerant consensus mechanism inspired by the Hot Stuff framework. Hot Stuff was developed in 2018 by a Palo Alto technology company, VMware. The blockchain will support smart contracts written in a new programming language called Move. Facebook's decision not to use Ethereum Solidity and instead focus on their own language clearly means that the tech giant intends to maintain a level of control over both the smart contracts and the entire network. Eventually, the plan is to open up the system to third-party developers. The Libra testnet is already available and gives developers the opportunity to experiment with smart contracts using Move. Let's focus on the tokens. The primary token is Libra, which will be the currency used on the network. What's interesting is that Libra will not be a stablecoin in the traditional sense, as it won't be pegged to a single fiat currency. Instead, the backing assets will be expressed in the four main fiats, USD, Euro, GBP, and Yen. The secondary token, called Libra Investment Token, will be primarily used to obtain node validator rights. The threshold to become a node validator is 10 million USD for commercial companies and could be lowered for high impact organizations such as nonprofits or NGOs. To make that possible, the underlying ledger will effectively be a permissioned blockchain, with Facebook granting validators privileges to selected parties. The consortium of node validators forms the Libra Association, which will be the controlling body of the entire project. This, in theory, should secure decentralization of the network and ensure that Facebook does not have a controlling stake in the operation. As of July 2019, several major companies have already confirmed their participation. These include MasterCard, PayPal, eBay, Uber, Spotify, and Coinbase. A good example of a high-impact organization joining the project is Women's World Banking, a nonprofit focused on micro banking solutions for low income female entrepreneurs. The Libra Association is aiming to have at least 100 members before the token's launch in 2020. 
What is important, the network capacity, initially set at 1,000 operations per second, will be directly correlated to the number of validators. Transaction speeds will inevitably decrease once more validators are added to the network. It is unclear at this time if Facebook intends to cap the total number of validators to ensure scalability. There's also a possibility that, due to high technical demands for no validators, the speed will not dip significantly once more validators are added. We'll simply have to wait and see. When it comes to the front end of the ecosystem, the Calibra subsidiary aims to develop products to interface with currency. The already announced Calibra wallet is the first product that will enable end users to participate in the ecosystem. According to the website, the wallet will make it possible to send money between users and allow businesses to accept payments in Libra. So what does it mean for the blockchain ecosystem at large? First of all, let's focus on the positives. If Libra delivers on its promise to be secure, private, and scalable, and Facebook stays true to their declaration not to exploit our data, the launch of Libra will mean a mainstream adoption of crypto. It will also bring a solid use case for blockchain. Here at Blockchain Central, we explored many of the obstacles to blockchain adoption in our Obstacles to Adoption series. Check out the playlist below. And Libra is exactly what we identified as needed for the mainstream success of crypto. If the project works out, it has the potential of disrupting the entire payment industry as we know it. It could also change the balance of power in the financial sector by taking the leverage away from the government and putting it in the hands of corporations. It also is not unlikely that if successful, Libra could affect the global dominance of the US dollar by providing an alternative unit of account. As you might suspect, the current establishment does not like that too much. Let's talk about the backlash from the regulators, which was, to put it mildly, severe. Maxine Waters, chair of the House of Financial Services Committee, has called on Facebook to immediately suspend any further development of the project, pending congressional hearings. The G7 Group has also immediately reacted to the Libra announcement by forming its own task force designed to investigate the issue. French Minister of Finance Bruno Le Maire commented openly that it is out of question that Libra be allowed to become a sovereign currency. Of course, on one hand, it could be seen as a positive development to see a solution so disruptive that it prompts an immediate reaction from the seven most powerful economies in the world. On the other hand, lack of sufficient regulation can cause financial and economic chaos across multiple markets. Another potential compliance hurdle for Facebook is the fact that their second token, Libra Investment Token, or LIT, is clearly a security as it offers the approved validator a stake in the Libra economy. As such, it will need to undergo even more scrutiny than the Libra coin itself. We don't know yet how the process is going to work. Other serious concerns pertain to the threat that Facebook monopolizing the entire sector. The giant is already said to have a near monopoly on social media and, together with Google, controlling over 80% of the digital advertising market. We have already heard many radical calls for the government to break up the tech giants, including a dramatic plea of Senator Elizabeth Warren that gained significant publicity in March. Facebook moving into finance can be the last straw that finally pushes the governments to adopt severe antitrust measures. Many people also raised concerns regarding Facebook's track record when it comes to privacy. Additionally, lack of control over interest-based ads, voter manipulation, fake accounts, and fake news are also frequently brought up. Of course, it is the official statement Facebook promises not to cross-reference any social account data with the transaction data and not to sell any data it gathers. According to Scott A. Shea, writing for Coindesk, there is zero reason to believe such promises. Even if Facebook stays true to its promises, we can already think of multiple scenarios for scams performed with the coin. The option of immediate payment on the platform could prompt scammers to exploit social engineering strategies to cheat thousands of people out of their hard-earned cash. Unless Facebook seriously curbs fake accounts and takes content monitoring more seriously, we could be facing a wave of criminal activity present on the Libra platform. As is usual the case, not all members of the blockchain community are excited by the prospect of Facebook taking over cryptocurrencies. Peter Todd, a Bitcoin core developer, called the technical white paper dishonest 
for calling Libra a decentralized blockchain. Many people on Twitter and Reddit are referring to Libra as PayPal 2.0 and are accusing Facebook of leveraging its reach to create a new central bank. The concerns are valid as it seems like only approved corporations will have access to the network's ledgers, while Facebook claims there will be a complete separation between social and financial data on the network, the validators, almost by definition, could have complete access to everyone's transaction history. This could serve as an added incentive for them to participate in the Libra investment token. Some also raise doubts whether Libra can even be considered a blockchain. This is, of course, a semantic issue determined by the definition of blockchain itself. Inside Libra's ledger transactions are not divided into blocks, although they are technically submitted in blocks by validators, the white paper itself states that there is no concept of a block or transaction in the ledger history, which, according to multiple analysts, means that it is not technically a blockchain. What's our take on all this? As always, we're cautiously optimistic. On one hand, the potential for disruption is already very impressive. On the other hand, the design of Libra ventures really far away from the ideals of Satoshi Nakamoto and calling it decentralized and trustless would be a stretch. One way or the other, the future is now. We're officially entering the age of cryptocurrencies and for better or worse, Facebook will now be the integral part of the crypto landscape. What's your take on Libra? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. See you in the next one.